around the time of becoming a senior, around the springtime, it becomes time to choose a college where you're going to go. Like you probably have multiple choices in your head right now, and if you're in Minnesota, most likely one of them is going to be Mankato. So I remember around this time, I wish there was like someone who would have talked about it and someone who would have said like laid it out for me flat said like here's this here's that here's this and like gave me options about the school and like told me what there is what to expect and like what the school's really like so i remember the last year when i was a senior and i was about to graduate and i was picking between a couple schools in minnesota and i didn't know which school i should decide because i didn't know what school offered what and I didn't really have a lot of information about each school and I'm sure like you guys who are watching this are wondering if Mankato is the right school for you or if another school is better and what you should do. So I'm just going to lay this out from my experience about Mankato and uh, kind of give you guys a little bit of advice. So to start the video off, I'm going to talk about kind of stereotypes. You probably hear Mankato being like this big like party school and it having like a ton of parties and like the biggest party school in Minnesota or whatever and it's in a small town that's like a college town and those are true to an extent. I would say it's not necessarily like a big like party school as it was. It definitely was year like, like four years ago I'd say. It was definitely a lot better of a party school but it's kind of like calmed down. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of like the, the videos at like college town where there's like the mud pit at homecoming and at Bebo and all that like the party scenes kind of but like on a weekend basis it's really just like house parties and not too much else it's not really like this big like party scene i mean we do have stuff going on throughout the week like we have like hot tub wednesdays and like uh hockey games and other activities like that but it's not necessarily like a big party school like it used to be it is in a small town though. Mankato is really only a college town. It's like kind of up upon the hill and like the rest of the town, I mean, I've gone downtown only a couple times, but like uh, other students who like live around the area, they tend to live downtown, but like they don't, like nothing else is really besides like downtown and campus, there's nothing really else there, to be honest. If you are a senior right now, you're most likely going to live in the dorms. Now there's four dorms there. There is Crawford, which is kind of like the bottom tier. Then there's like McElroy, which is like the next step up. Then there is Presca, which is like a level up again. And then there's Julius Sears, which is like the top tier. So Crawford has, each of them have four halls. So uh, C Hall is the kind of like the crappiest one. That was the one I was in, where like you can see like the, the closets were made of like old wood, the wood was chipping and the rooms weren't very renovated, but Crawford does have renovated rooms. Then you have McElroy, which Mc, all the McElroy rooms are like more renovated than like the Crawford C Hall. Then you have Presca. Presca is kind of like Julius Sears, but it's like hybrid. Only two halls have like, do uh, you have your own bathroom in it and your own shower, and they have higher ceilings. And uh, the other two are just like McElroy's, and they're just like the renovated rooms. Now those three are connected, but on the other side of campus there is Julius Sears, and what Julius Sears is is the nicer ones. I think those rooms are like like 9,000 I think compared to like 6,000 for like the other dorms. Now if you're thinking about living off campus or living on the dorms there are pros and cons. The thing with that is if you live on the dorms you're gonna have to be under the CA and you're gonna have to share a room that's kind of small and you're also gonna have most likely a community bathroom but you are gonna be able to meet a lot of people there. You're gonna be convenient going to your classes and everything is walking distance. Now if you live off campus, it's most likely going to be cheaper, but transportation is going to be hard, but you don't have to worry about a CA and you have a lot more freedom when you're off campus. Now next to the dorms is the dining hall. The dining hall is pretty good. I'd say it's one of the better ones in Minnesota actually. It was just built around two years ago, but the only downside of it is they try to make it extremely healthy and when they do that, it kind of compromises like the taste of the food and it's like... There's a lot of chicken and rice you're gonna be eating and like the pizza is not the best, but they do have like salad bar and a lot of vegan options as well and they do have ice cream, so. Honestly, you might get there and be really surprised with the food and be like, this food is amazing, like I don't have to cook, I can like all you can eat, but like you don't, like you're gonna get sick of it, I promise you. I thought the same thing first semester I went in, I was like, like this food is good, like this is like, heaven almost but like you get sick of it like the food starts to taste bad and like 
there it just slowly declines and I think that happens with every school cafeteria but for the most part I mean the cafeteria is not bad in terms of classes and class sizes my first semester I really didn't have any small classes the university has around 15,000 students attending there so you're not really necessarily gonna get that one-on-one -on -one with the teacher I on the other hand though I always sat in front of my classes so the teachers at least knew my face I mean I think the smallest class I had my first semester had about a hundred and like ten kids and that was my math class but that is a very popular math class other math classes like my friends took had like 20 kids in them for example if you're looking to have a smaller class size and have a really hands-on learning experience with your teacher, you're not really going to get that at Mankato or really any state school since there is probably 10,000 kids that at least go there and it's kind of hard for faculty to really get hands-on with you and uh, get that one-on-one -on -one attention. In terms of majors and classes, there are a ton of options. If I were you, I would look up whatever your desired major or your couple desired majors are and like see if Mankato has them and see if they benefit you correctly. That's the main thing I would do if you're looking into a school. Compare what you are interested in into the school and not really look at the school as a whole. Just look at what you necessarily need out of the school. So the campus size is pretty good. I believe it's a one mile square and it takes 10 minutes to walk from one point to any point on campus. Uh, in the winter, it is a little tricky because what happens is like if the buildings are closed, you are going to have to walk outside, which is not the worst thing as long as you wear a coat. But it was just a little bit annoying, like walking to like the gym, let's say, if like all the buildings are closed and it was like nighttime or like walking to like the soccer dome or taking the shuttles. There are shuttles that are running always. They come every 10 minutes through campus and uh, they stop at the dorms, they stop at CSU and they stop at the library and various locations around campus. So transportation is pretty easy. Now, one big key advice that I'd give a lot of you guys is financial aid cannot wait. You guys need to apply do not put it off otherwise it will come back and bite you in the ass i had a friend that did it and he literally regretted it because you lose so much money when you don't apply and when you apply later they give you less money so you definitely want to apply for it as early as possible for me i was trying to find scholarships and trying to find certain things that i could apply for to save me money but to be honest with you they tell you there's so many scholarships out there but in reality like I looked, I applied, I did my research, and I didn't really find much. The financial aid that I received was actually only from like FAFSA. That's it. I didn't have any other outside scholarships or anything like that because one thing is I applied late, and I think if you apply past like March, it's probably too late now. Uh, you actually can't get any like anything from the school. So like I believe they had if you had like a 23 higher, you'd get like. 500 off if you had like a 3.5 or higher you'd get like 500 or a thousand dollars off your tuition but i applied for all that too late so i missed out thinking about working while you're in school i would definitely 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 recommend it uh my roommate Luis, you guys know him he worked at the library on campus i had other friends that worked in like the gym i had friends that worked in like the dome like you can definitely get an on-campus job just keep applying for it now ones that I would suggest that are like probably going to be the best and the easiest, one is the gym, the fitness rec center. It's extremely hard to work there because everyone wants to work there, but if you get the opportunity to work there, you literally can just sit there and watch Netflix or do your homework for your whole shift. Most people think they're going to be too busy to work or they want to like focus on school, but in reality, you have so much free time. It's not like high school anymore where you're going from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's literally like you have a couple classes a day and after those classes you can work. Some days you may have off and you can work. You can work on weekends. Like you have a lot of time to work. So why not get a job? Now the one nice thing about Mankato is we do have a really nice facility. It's called the Auto Rec Center. It's got three basketball courts in there and then it's got an upper level track with machines all around it. And then there's also a lifting room downstairs. Now it can get a little crowded since there are a lot of students using it. and. It's not the biggest space, but it works for what it is. Now, at your orientation, you probably are going to be asked if you want to join a learning community or like a study group. I would highly recommend this. I, myself, joined the business learning community, and I actually didn't really, I wasn't interested in joining it at first. I only really joined it so I could take this one math class, but the math class was full, but they're like, if you join the learning community, you can join the learning community math class. So I was like, all right, fine. But once I did it, I realized like I met a lot of people through it and like that group allowed us to study because we all had the same classes. 
so we can study for all the same classes. And that way, it's like a system that like works because it's like a team and you get to study with them. One thing that's really nice about Mankato is there's a lot of clubs and a lot of activities for you to do there. There's a lot of things that you can get involved with and there's a lot of things that you can join. The matter is you have to go and ask or you have to go and seek. Sometimes people will come up to you and like talk to you about certain things, but like you just have to put yourself out there and really go and do it. Another thing that's great about Mankato is we have a lot of like networking events, like business events, like job events, career paths, like everything like that. And it's held in like the CSU ballroom. And there's a ton of them throughout the semester. And I would highly suggest going to these because there you can join like clubs, you can network there, you can get like an internship there. And like you can just meet new people there and like learn a lot about campus. One key advice that I'm so thankful for I did was not buying your textbooks early. Whatever you do, do not buy your textbooks until you go to class and the professor says you need them. For the majority of the classes, you honestly don't even need the textbook unless you just like reading it. Most of the stuff is online and it's free. Unless you like having a paper copy of it, I would not buy any textbooks. Like for my film class, I bought the textbook this semester and I haven't even opened it once. Now, the good thing about Mankato is we run through a system called Cengage, which you've probably heard of, but it's like a yearly subscription or like a four month subscription. But the thing is, I made the mistake because Cengage, I bought the four month one, when in reality, I should have bought the two year one because if I'm gonna stay at Mankato, it's like a tremendous discount off. So I wish someone would have told me to buy like the two year, like the one year one, because I would have saved so much money rather than me spending like 80 for four months and then I'm spending like 170 for two years. I forgot to film the outro yesterday, but thank you guys so much for watching. And if you'd like, you can check out the bloopers. Make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe. Peace out. One thing that you guys, some of you are, one thing that you, some of you, fuck. <laughs> one key to advice that, one thing I would highly recommend about, one really to simply walk have